Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at some of the settings that are available in Slider Revolution 5. We're going to take a look at how these impact upon the actual slider we've created and how we can get creative with some of these options. So let's take a look at what's available now. So for this video, we're going to concentrate on the layout and visual section. I've covered the navigation option in a previous video, and I'll put a link to that in the description and also the top of the video. So if you're interested in that, take a look at what options are available to you there. So layout and visual, it gives us four different available tabs. We've got the appearance, spinner, mobile, and position. And each one of those gives us a range of different settings and options that we can apply to the slider we have selected. Now, the thing to bear in mind is that everything is cumulative. For example, if we change the navigation to use something like thumbnails, then when we actually apply things like the shadows and stuff like that, it's going to have an effect on the overall slider that we're using. So if we take a look at the pop-out window that shows you exactly what your slider is going to look like in a sort of small format, you can see at the moment I've got the thumbnail option set up for my navigation, which means that if we choose a shadow option, you can see it all goes a little bit weird. Just think to bear in mind that it may be worthwhile ensuring that it, everything is compatible. So I'm going to turn the thumbs off and switch back to layer of visual. So let's start exploring these options. Let's choose a shadow type. We'll choose two, that doesn't really matter. And as you can take a look, as we choose the different options, the little pop-out will show you exactly what they're going to look like. So the next option available to us is the dotted overlay size. Now this doesn't show particularly well on the little pop-up window, but if I explain what it does, and then I'll show you an example when we've actually go through and make these changes, give you a better idea of what's going on. It effectively puts either a two by two or a three by three pixel black or white overlay on the background of your slider. So for example, if you've got quite a busy background and you want the text or the images that you put on top of your background to stand off a little better, then this is a great little sort of way of applying some shading, should we say, to the background of it that makes everything pop off there a little bit better. And like I say, I'll show you an example of that in a moment. And we'll just choose, for this example, we'll go for 2 by 2 black and see what that looks like. Slider background. Padding as border and show background image. Now, these are settings that are going to be down to you kind of thing. Your background color is what color do you want the background to be. So if you don't use a background image, you just use a background color, you can have that as the default background. So your padding as border is effectively the padding around the outside edge of your slider. And whatever background color you choose, that will become a sort of stroke line around the edge of it. So it's worthwhile bearing in mind if you want to create something to sort of stand off your page, that's a good way of doing it. And you've got the final option, which is show background image, which if we expand that, you can see we've got a couple of different options. So we can specify instead of just a solid color in the background, we can have an image on the background of every single slider. And then you can apply this, the typical kind of things. You can have it to cover it, scale to, to fit. Uh, you can specify whether it repeats or not, and the exact position of the image inside your slider dimension. So whether you want center, 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 top, center, right, and so on. We'll turn that off. And we'll actually save this now, and we'll go and take a look at what it looks like on the page with these, these first lot of options set up. Okay, so we're on the front end of the site, and you can see now that we've got our shadow, the style we chose. And we've got, if you can see, a sort of pixel overlay. Now I'll zoom in on this in a moment just to sort of show you what I mean. But there's a, a very fine 2 pixel by 2 pixel or 3 pixel by 3 pixel uh, black grid applied to this, pixel grid. So it kind of makes that sort of like a TV effect, shall we say. So then anything I sort of put over the top of this would stand off the background just that little bit better. So switch back over to the admin. And let's just try this. Let's go for the slider background. Let's choose a color and we'll just specify it's going to be a medium gray. We'll set five pixel border and yeah, let's just leave it at that. Let's just save that out, switch over to the front end of the site and let's take a look at how that affects the actual slider itself. So by refreshing the page, you can now see we've got our three pixel medium gray border around the outside edge of our slider. So those are the first couple of options. Let's just come back in and let's take a look at the second tab, the spinner. So what this does is it's very simple. It allows you to specify what type of spinner you want in between each of your slides just to denote the fact that something's loading. 
So you can see we have an example and you can see we can turn this off. So we have nothing. We can go through and choose any of the different options that are available to us. We can even fine tune some of these options and change their colors. So you can see we have quite a few different options available to us, which again, we can choose colors and blend this in to ensure that it works well with the design that you're using. Switch over to mobile. We can now specify exactly what happens to certain sort of features of our slider based upon if it's being used on a mobile device. So for example, we can say we want to completely disable the slider if we use it on a mobile device, which is great if you want to sort of reduce the file sizes and things like that, because if you're generally uploading a slider that's sort of full screen, your images can be quite large. And if you've got someone on a mobile device, they don't necessarily want to download these huge files just for a nice little graphic thing that looks quite small on their screen. So again, it's something to bear in mind, depending upon your site, you can disable or enable that depending upon what you want to do. You can also do the same things with the Ken Burns option. So if you set that to be one of the effects you want to work with within your slider, you can turn that off and disable that on mobile devices. You could even go through and specify exactly what sizes the element is actually hidden. So for example, you could say that under 250 pixels in width, the slider is hidden. And uh, another setting, you can specify any predefined layers are hidden, or you can specify all layers are hidden. So you can get quite creative with what people on mobile devices actually see. And then finally, we've got the position option. And this just denotes the position of the slider on your page. So you can see we've got left, center, and right. And it's quite a good description of breakdown in the actual flyout sort of description of what this particular function does. So you've always got a great little reminder of what each one of these settings do. You can specify a margin at the top or a margin at the bottom. So if you're finding that your particular design, the content or the navigation that may be at the top or the bottom of your slider is finding it's encroaching or you haven't got enough space around it, you can actually then apply padding or mar sorry, you can apply margins at the top or the bottom and you can then make sure that it sits away from these different elements to give you some sort of breathing space there. And that really is all there is to the layout and visual section. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, pop those in the comment section below. We'll read everything you put up onto YouTube, and we try to answer everything, every question you've got. So until next time, take care.